Welcome to ULMX, Universal Language Media Exchange, Society and Culture. Today, it's another Life in Germany episode, but we're doing more of a topic video instead of a vlog or a video in which I talk about a daily ongoings. This is more of a themed video about one of my favorite aspects of European and German culture, cycling. Today, we're talking about the frenzy taking over the streets, the e-bikes. ULMX is a language learning app and we sponsor our own videos here. So after a word from our sponsor, we're going to dive into a few things. We're going to talk about the updates. We're going to have a bit of a job posting because ULMX is looking for some help on our team. And I'm going to talk about a couple of anecdotes, stories, and just my thoughts on the e-bike scene right now, which in my opinion is bolstering and is in no other place in the world so strong as Germany. Hey, welcome back to ULMX, everybody. Today, I want to talk about e-bikes. ULMX is hiring a part-time, well, not, not part-time, but contractual basis, software tester. So I've been doing all this software testing myself, and I'm not really that good at it because I'm not a professional software tester. So if you're experienced in that field, we could definitely use your help. We have a developer who writes the code, but then I'm testing it myself, which means the tests aren't really professionally done because I really don't know how to recreate my own results sometimes. That's kind of where we're running into issues. <laughs> so right now we have the second version written up, but we're not exactly sure why uh, some issues are popping up. Like uh, I figured out a way to make it seem to the program like the file's not on the device anymore, the audio file, and uh, no one knows how I did that. So, yeah, if you're a software tester, we'd love to uh, hear from you. In other news, I'm on my way to work right now. I love riding my bike, um, and squeezing it into the commute makes makes it possible to ride it. <laughs> Otherwise, I would pretty much never ride at all, which is kind of sad, but yeah, working doesn't give you a lot of time for riding, basically. It's about 7 a.m., 7.15. I wanted to talk to you guys about e-bikes today because I love cycling, and uh, this is one of the big trends in Germany, like big trends. I actually was making a little video yesterday and while I was talking to the camera, a retired, aged looking man blasted by me on an e-bike. It was like he was on a dirt bike. It was so fast. Conversational. E-bikes, the huge trend that is just taking over Germany. It's amazing. It's a way for people who aren't as fit to, it's kind of an accessibility thing. It gives them a chance to really do all the same rides, like same distance, same trails, without the level of fitness that you might need. Or what it can also do is just make it so you can do that without it being a workout. Or, uh, so you can do even more. A dangerous trend sometimes is when new equipment comes out, people end up just pushing the limits even further. When new safety ideas come to the market, like in uh, skiing, avalanche backpacks. So you pull a little, like, like a par parachute cord, you pull that, and then instead of a parachute coming out, a balloon comes out of your backpack and it floats you to the top of the avalanche. And what have people done? People just push the limits even harder, getting themselves caught in even more avalanches. And um, it's the same thing with rock climbing. As soon as they invented the rope, as soon as they invented the harness, people just took more risks. I mean, it's the same thing in the stock market. They invented these things called high-frequency automatic computer algorithm-based trades. So it's trading like 7,000 times a second. And uh, what happens, the, the stock market's just a little bit, you know, riskier for that. You're just trying to push the profits you can get using that new tool with an e-bike even if you already are fit, maybe you can now just go on like a 600 kilometer ride in, 
how long is the life of the battery? What I wanted to talk about is just how many e-bikes there are and kind of ask if you guys have other international experience, do you think that Germany is the e-bike capital of the world? Because I'd say about a third, it's, it's that high, a third of bikes I see are e-bikes. It could even be a, like 50%. That's how prevalent they are. And they're most popular with older people because it enables them to just do more riding. It helps them so it doesn't require so much fitness to do the same cruise. And um, they're expensive too. They're like 5,000 bucks, a lot of them. Some of them are like 2,500, but it's not uncommon to spend 5,000 on one of these things. And that, compared to a regular bike, $5,000 bike is almost like as much as you can find in like a catalog. Of course, there are like connoisseurs who are ordering extra special stuff and you can get up to like 15000 with a regular road bike if you're kind of one of those Tour de France fans who just like wants all Italian or all French bike or something. But um, a real legacy bike, real prestige steed you probably never want to ride, but a $5,000 bike will give you a really, really top of the line stock type of model from a main manufacturer. And um, people are spending five, you could go up easily to 10, like 11,000 on an e-bike, but you know, the mid range is like 25, 25 is the low range to 5,000 and a lot of people are investing in that because it's such a good lifestyle choice for them. It enables them to do more fitness. And that's kind of like the ULMX app. You have a tool now that allows you to do more training and ultimately, like fitness is gained by the number of trips you take to the gym. And what I mean by that is, it's all about the number of sessions. It's all about the volume. It doesn't have to be that intense. And that's why it's such a good lifestyle choice for an older couple to buy e-bikes because they don't have to like recharge their own, you know, bodies so much after the ride. Then they can go on an All right, that was an unfortunate technical difficulty. Ran out of space on the memory card there. Happens, but try to avoid it as much as possible. What I was saying is I think it's great for people to improve their volume of training, to increase their volume of training because it increases the accessibility. It makes it easier for people to just do more at a lower intensity. And that low intensity is critical. Most people burn themselves out, don't do that. Even in the Tour de France, these people ride at a very sustainable pace for their fitness level. They have extremely high fitness, so their pace is fast, but for them, they can talk in the peloton. Lance Armstrong talks about this. The mountain climbs, yeah, of course you can't talk. You're breathing so hard. You're at an aerobic output of a superhuman who could only do it with extremely good help in the pharmaceutical department. But anyways, average people, average riding, even during the Tour de France, 90% of the riding is pretty easy for them. It's that last 10% or 5% that gets really, really intense and difficult. Being able to increase the accessibility by lowering the intensity allows you to increase the volume. And just as language learning, fitness, improving the environment, whatever, the more volume of that activity you do, the better. So the easier it is made. And that is why I think this is an extremely important thing, even though it seems topical. It seems kind of superficial, like on uh, e-bikes. Like, no, this is a movement. Like, the accessibility that you have to actually using your bike to do things like shopping or to actually encourage you to go out on your bike and you don't have to do a tiny lap around the block and then you're gassed, winded, just out of breath. Instead, you can go on a ride around the whole town, on, around the whole city. And the intensity has been brought down to a sustainable pace for you. 
This is huge. It's a monumental shift in just fitness lifestyle and bringing that to more people. Of course, it's not cheap, but it's so much cheaper than a car and it's so worth it. So you have the benefit of just making things that are harder, easier, but you also have that benefit of making things that they're not hard, but you don't really feel like doing it because it's raining. If you're trying to live a bike lifestyle, now that's not as much of a pain. It kills your excuse to say, oh, it's raining. I don't want to go to the shops. Uh, you can go because you have a bike there with fenders. It's going to help you carry the extra weight. And honestly, you're going to be back in like five minutes because they go so fast. Conversational. Sometimes, depends. If you put a little bit of effort in yourself, they go really fast. So you can increase your volume. Anyone can do it. And it's an excuse killer. And I think this is actually very meaningful for a cultural shift. If you look at the United States, all these three reasons are the reasons why people don't ride enough bikes at like an adult sort of grown up level to actually encourage the infrastructure to accommodate that. So you don't have many bike paths, you don't have much space on the side of the road, and it discourages people from living that. That's an important lifestyle choice that could really help the environment. Because most people's 90% of their trips in their car are short, not long. And if it's like five miles, it's a pretty easy trip to make with a bike. And if you have an e-bike and a little trailer on the back of it, you could carry way more than 90% of your loads. Unless you're like a contractor, I'm not trying to replace contractors' pickup trucks here. I'm just saying like for an average grocery shopping haul, you can carry that and pull that pretty easily with an e-bike. The amount of wattage that you need to actually pull it, it's starting and stopping is the most energy. So what I'm saying here is this is a very meaningful cultural aspect. For me, it's moving almost because I'm passionate about that. It's great for the environment. It's great for your health. And hell, it's even like it's cheap. It makes the whole like life more nicer. It's everything's nicer because cars and parking lots take up so much space. It's really like they're the dominant life form on the planet. There's this book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and an alien comes to the planet and actually mistakes the cars as the dominant life form on the planet, and he names himself Ford Prefect so that he can fit in more easily. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think it's great. I just, I love it. I really love it. And every time I'm in a bike shop just buying like a tube or a light or whatever little dinky thing I'm buying for my bike, there's always someone in there like at least test riding, if not about to purchase an e-bike. They're moving off the shelves faster than they can make these things. It's incredible. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm all for it. And it's just this demographic shift. You see so many older people on bikes here in Europe. In the United States, it's all young people or that tiny niche of people who think they're professional, fake professional cyclists like me, who like put on their cycling Lycra and they go out on a ride and they like ride right next to the cars and they're like tough guys in the rain, in the snow, it doesn't matter. That's such a small percentage of people. Whereas like basically every single retiree in Germany has an e-bike. It's an exaggeration, but just like look at the orders of magnitude of these, these people on the side of the road, tough guys, all retirees with e-bikes. I mean that demographic where it's not really a kid's toy anymore. It's a real lifestyle choice. And before the automobile, it really was. It was awesome. <laughs> like, it was such a leap from like being dependent on having a horse and a stable. And then like basically as soon as the bicycle got invented, then the car got invented too. And yeah, who knows who went on the right track with that. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is ULMX, Society and Culture. Today we've talked about e-bikes and uh, don't forget, if you're a software tester, we would love to hear from you because our team could use you. We're working on our second version of our app. 
Our first version is already available in the App Store for iOS devices, iPad, iPod Touch, if you still have one of those, and why wouldn't you? It's a great device. Or an iPhone. It's available for English learning for German native speakers. I wrote the program myself, I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. A date.